uh, shoes come off by the door. So shoes are not worn in, uh, in the RV because we obviously don't. Here's behind, you know, the chairs, the carpet looks pretty good. But when you look at the carpet, you know, the, the wear pattern from, uh, you know, where people would come in the door and walk to the uh, fireplace or to the, the back of the unit and then back, uh, the wear seems pretty substantial. Like, I don't know, this, the, there's been a lot of people walking through this, uh, through this unit. And, and I can't understand how a, how a brand new unit could have had uh, so much traffic uh, walking through this unit to cause this much wear pattern uh, to this carpeting. Because it <clears throat> doesn't seem as though it's, uh, you know, such terrible quality carpeting that it should wear. But I've got carpeting in my home that is over 13 years old, and it's fine. This is a very good idea by Keystone for your trash can. Always looking for a good place to put the trash can. And somebody with Keystone came up with this great idea of hiding your trash can under here. Well, that idea was good, but the build... Uh, unfortunately, this entire piece fell apart. I mean, it just completely fell apart. It was being held together with a couple of screws, some staples, uh, and it was not cut correctly to where the pieces actually fit correctly. So along the bottom seam there, you can see where I added epoxy, and I also, it's a little dark, but I did add epoxy to the top of the seams and the side of the seams. A problem is the hinges that are holding this on, most of the screws that are, are put in to hold these hinges on are actually stripped. Um, they're, uh, uh, they're really not holding anything. So eventually those hinges need to come out. But you can see how this is uneven. Uh, when it's put together, it's, it's really not cut correctly and when you're looking at a 60 or 70 thousand dollar trailer you would think that it should be cut correctly you can tell by the gaps here um, it's really just a very thin piece of veneer type of wood uh, but you can tell by the gaps it actually does have a crack in it uh, uh, here's some more uh, about the carpeting where you can see areas where the carpeting has never been walked on you know, it's pretty fluffy, nice carpeting. Um, but then you get to where uh, people walk on it, the traffic pattern, and, you know, the difference is, uh, is really pretty, uh, pretty substantial. You can really tell that there is a real wear pattern that should not occur with, you know, 30 to 45 days of use uh, with people that are not even wearing shoes. There's been in my opinion, a lot of traffic through this. The uh, matting of this carpeting on the stairway is just phenomenal. Uh, I mean, it looks like there's been just thousands of people up and down these stairs. And because if you look at, you know, there's the matting, but now look at the sides, the edges. Uh, that's what the carpet really should look like, and it, particularly the edges uh, the, vertically there. That's you know that carpet should be nice. It should be fluffy. And I actually paid an additional twelve hundred dollars when I bought this for a paint and interior um, uh, treatment, so that this would not happen. So that this could not happen. Um, and I don't feel that that was a $1,200 is very well spent because if they treated this, they, I, I think that this uh, traffic pattern was uh, just not treatable. And uh, it just seems to me that when we, you know, bought this and did the walkthrough, it was fluffed up a little bit and perhaps didn't notice. Lights might have been dim. I don't know. But, uh, you know, for a uh, uh, trailer this young, this brand new, a 2011 that was delivered in December uh, and has only been used for 30 or 45 days and uh, frankly used in good climates like, you know, Southern Florida, Ocala, Florida, uh, Key West, Florida. Um, there hasn't been any uh, uh, 
any any kind of traffic going through here. We haven't had anybody in this uh, uh, trailer. The traffic pattern does go through to the uh, bedroom as well. And it's just like there were a lot of people looking at this. You can tell, you know, here's a, a piece of the um, uh, curtain that is, isn't even fastened on and it's supposed to be. So that just, you know, just flops in the breeze. Um, <clears throat> so again, it just looked to me like the quality uh, that uh, Keystone represented in their literature and their videos that I relied upon their uh, their claims um, it just doesn't seem to be there. There's a, uh, ca a cabinet in a bathroom that I also, again, I had to replace uh, the hinges. These doors actually fell off. Uh, you can see I was a little bit messy with the glue there, but uh, uh, at least now they're, you know, they're very secure. They're, they're held on. I had to put little two pieces of toothpick in the holes because when these screws were put in, they were tightened down until they completely stripped, so they were not even holding these doors on, as well as uh, on the inside that uh, as we open the cabinet, you'll see um, <clears throat> where the doors actually fasten, uh, those were also stripped. So those just kept moving back and forth and eventually fell off. Uh, so those also had to be uh, remounted. Uh, and for the most part, I mean, every cabinet, Every screw uh, in this unit needs to be reworked uh, in order for this unit to even really be usable. Um, I did buy the washer and the dryer. It's the washer at the bottom and the dryer at the top. Uh, one thing I want to point out is these louver doors. Um, those little panels in there pop right out. They just fall right out. Uh, so those also have to be uh, glued in. They're held in by a couple of flimsy staples. Uh, they have to be taken out. They need to be glued in um, uh, because they continuously fall out. But the day one, the washer did not work. So here I am in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, five or six hundred miles away from uh, where I bought the thing in Batavia, Ohio. The washer didn't work blew a hydraulic line on the slide so the slides couldn't come in had to go through five gallons of hydraulic fluid on the slides was told that I had to take the um, trailer back to the selling dealer which was Holman Motors in uh, Cincinnati or Batavia Ohio so I had to spend my money my time my gas cancel my reservations in Florida uh, in order to take this back to have the slides fixed and to have the washing machine replaced. Um, so uh, I had planned on continuing after okay, here we to are, uh, back to we're, we're at the underside um, of the underbelly, uh, 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 Florida. So you can I see this is the furnace uh, home and motors underneath the furnace uh, to ship a new uh, washing above the machine. furnace. There's a lot of uh, wire here Florida that is very concerning. It's not in conduit. You have Florida wire that's crossing again, over way out of my uh, way. Other wire, uh, wire that's crossing you know, over other metal objects, objects wire that can easily chaff. In order to go these two this, circular uh, areas on the furnace, they were actually kind of open. I went ahead and closed them. They probably need to be taped, and you can also see on the top where the hoses are attached to the furnace nobody bothered to do any kind of taping or anything on those um, where it's uh, uh, where the the heat ducts are hooked up um, you can see uh, you know wire there that uh, could easily start chaffing you've got wire that's crossing over um, areas you got pieces of wood there with splits in it where they just drilled drilled screws in um, and uh, down here you can you can see that um, screws were put in this until it just split the wood uh, this is supposed to be holding this panel up but screws were just put in nobody bothered drilling holes or anything um, and you can see there's a lot of sawdust uh, this particular piece was split so badly I just had to glue it together because it was holding nothing. So I glued that piece together. Um, but you can see, 
you can see how wires are crossing over uh, these uh, these lines. They're pink because there's our RV antifreeze fluid in there. But the other problem is when you put this panel up, it's actually causing a compression of these uh, water lines, which um, could be you know causing some problems. Um, the uh, the furnace seems to work very well. The bedroom gets extremely hot while the living room is freezing cold. Uh, Holman Motors, when they uh, had the belly opened up and they were trying to fix the hydraulic line, said that one of the ducting lines actually was never even connected uh, to the living room. But even still, uh, the bedroom gets very hot while the living room, frankly, is uh, is still is still very uh, very cold. You can see the um, area. Well, the ducting is hooked up to the furnace. There's quite a gap there, so you have quite a bit of um, uh, heat escaping, uh, which, you know, obviously if you're paying for propane, uh, you want as much of that heat going into the unit as possible. You can see uh, down here by the water pump where you've got wires that are crossing right over um, uh, areas, actually right over a... Uh, a, a piece of the uh, a joint in the pipe where a leak would be very easy uh, to occur and could uh, be an electrical hazard. Uh, down underneath here, uh, you can see that you know uh, apparently they don't necessarily believe in cleanliness when they're working. They just kind of put stuff in. You see all this foam down here. That's foam that I had to put in because. When I opened this up and looked down, all I could see was daylight. And uh, obviously, if uh, this is supposedly an insulated underbelly, uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to have very, very cold air uh, coming in through the bottom of the unit. So I went ahead and put some of that spray foam in there uh, just to um, uh, help insulate that hole because it was just daylight uh, right through that hole. Where that particular um, heat ducting goes, I have uh, no idea. It's anybody's guess. It, uh, it may go to the living room. Uh, nobody really knows. You can see some additional wire here, some fairly thin, that have no protection, no ties. There's no, no zip ties, no, none, none of that kind of stuff on uh, any of the stuff that I've seen. And um, not being in conduit is a, is a concern because that, you know, the trailer's moving. It, uh, it could start chaffing and uh, uh, lose um, uh, its insulation, and then you start having shorts and fires and things like that that I think are very hazardous. You can see there's wires uh, crossing over. You get a ground wire there uh, crossing over uh, water lines. Um, but according to Keystone uh, that told the dealer that I'm working with in uh, uh, Ohio and in, in Columbus, they said that this, uh, according to their, you know, uh, the photographs I sent to them of this, uh, this is all standard build and up to code. This is just a lampshade. You know, I bought a lamp um, and table 